Hey y'all, it's Betsy from Happily Ever After Etc. and I am back with another resin tutorial. So today I have a bit more advanced project, I guess. Technically you can do it at any level, but this is the one I've struggled with the most. We are going to be preserving whole flowers in resin. So this is for me a save the bouquet technique. So say you have your bouquet from your wedding or from an event and you want to save some of those flowers, preserving them in resin is a really fun and easy way to do that. There's a million different molds you can use. There's a million different techniques. I've used little flowers in lots of projects before, and especially if you flatten them, they're super easy to work with. But if you want to preserve an entire flower in resin, A, you need a mold big enough to hold an entire flower. B, you may need to dry it out with silica gel or in my case, I am using some um, wooden flowers from a bouquet I had, and they're a little easier to work with than the fresh flowers for the simple fact that when you use your little heat gun to pop the bubbles, the petals don't burn quite as easily. It's still able to work with real flowers from a bouquet, but it's not quite as simple. So for this project, you're going to need a mold you can use something like a silicone cake pan if you want to do an entire arrangement, but I just wanted to preserve one rose by itself with a few little pearls and extra pieces that I had. So I bought, and I'll put a link down below, a round mold that I'm making kind of a paperweight out of, and it'll sit on my mantle or my desk and just look really pretty. So one mold, you need your resin, you need all your safety equipment, so your respirator, gloves, you need your trusty heat gun. I'm using my Wagner HT400, like always. I think I use that in every single video. You are going to need your flowers. I'll leave a link below to the ones that I originally used to make my bouquet. Um, if you're using real flowers, like I said, you'll need silica gel. There's a bee! And I'll leave a link to that below as well. From there, it's up to you. You're gonna need clear resin at the top of your piece if you wanna see it. I did use some alcohol inks to make the very bottom layer of mine white, and I used some glitter so that it kinda hides the bottom. Other than that, we're gonna get started. When you're working with flowers, there's a couple things to take into consideration, especially if you're preserving a whole flower. Resin gets hot when it cures, y'all. So, the deeper, the mold, the hotter it's going to burn faster, and that burning will burn your flowers. So the trick to avoid that is to do smaller layers throughout your piece that aren't going to burn as hot or burn your petals. So this is a three or four inch mold, I wanna say, and I ended up doing seven layers. I probably could have done eight, but since that last layer is the white opaque, it was a little thicker than all the rest of my layers. Other than that, go slow. Make sure you drench your flour and resin before you start, okay? So I'll show you exactly what I mean. But basically, you wanna prop your flour in a little silicone cup or on a silicone mat, and you want to make sure you pour resin down in all the crevices, between all the petals, so that you don't get all those little tiny bubbles inside your flour. Once that's done, you can put it in your mold. We're gonna go through all of this, but it's worth mentioning because I didn't do any of this the first time I tried it and I messed up my flowers. <laughs> Let's get started.
All right, y'all, here it is. Moment of truth. I have let this thing cure for a couple, couple hours all day yesterday, and now we'll see how it looks. It's coming up. I think it's definitely dry enough. I do want to point out before I take it all the way off though that the resin was up to the top but as it settles it's sunk down which is fine in this case because I need a slightly flat bottom to set this on. If you want it to be perfectly spherical so that you can put it on a stand or something you may need to go back in and top that off. All right, so far the bottom looks awesome. I wanted the the white and the flowers and the pearls to kind of be suspended a little bit and come up and not be perfectly straight. So that seems to have worked. There we go. There's a slight line around where the two spaces met, but I've heard that happens. You can fix that pretty easy. All right. Oh, it's pretty. So as you can see, since it's pretty big, the rose definitely takes up the entire space. It definitely still has captured quite a bit of air in here. Um, so if you're looking to prevent that, then you just really have to... How I flooded the flower, that prevented all the bottom spaces, but when you dip the rose in, that's when you're trying to avoid that. I do like the pearls at the bottom. I think if I was doing it again, I would add some more pearls up top because you really can't see any of those from the top. But it turned out beautiful, you guys. And that's just one way to preserve a flower. All right, I'm gonna take some pretty finished shots and we'll be finished. One more quick thing before I turn it off. Those little diamond crystals that I put in, um, I can see them if I really look. There you go. But they really blend with the resin. So again, if I was doing this again, I might use just smaller pearls or a different color, something that's more noticeable because you really can't see those hardly at all just looks like a rose trapped in water, which is really pretty. But you could easily do this for your whole bouquet and have a few really pretty pieces. I'm gonna just trim this off and I'll probably sand the bottom a little so that it has a rusting spot and we'll be good to go. All right, y'all, I know you got the close up, but how pretty did this turn out? Now, as I showed you, there are definitely more air bubbles up top than I would have preferred. Um, and the really, when you put your flower in, you wanna do it at an angle to try and avoid air bubbles, you're still gonna get some. That's just luck of the draw to how many bubbles you get. And it looks like water on the petals, so it does look pretty. If I was doing this again, which I will because I have more flowers for my bouquet, 
I would put pearls in at least the second layer and the third layer. I started at the fourth, fifth, and sixth layers because I would have rather had a few up top. And I would have put, like I said, instead of those little tiny pink rhinestone gems, I would have put a colored pearl or something that would show up better. But all in all, I love how this turned out. I'd love to make maybe a little one to go with it or another big one with a different color flower from my bouquet. And I think these will look really pretty on my mantle. Leave a comment down below on what you would like to preserve. And if you're gonna be trying this, I'd like to know. Thanks y'all, bye.